come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest, continued quest for total world domination, which you, only you, can help out with Mm. by hitting that like or subscribe button. It's up to you. It is, really. We can't do anything, but if we amass the crowds. That's right. We can take over the world. We can become the fastest growing movie review podcast in the galaxy. Indeed. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Holly is on assignment mm. tonight. Yeah. Is she, she biking might be, across I the say, country? Yeah. I think she's like undercover at a bike rally right now. Ooh. <laughs> we'll have that report next week. Yeah. Uh, so tonight we watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. Colin, what do we watch tonight? We watched a movie called Stone Cold. Ooh, from the year. 1991. Doesn't feel like it. No? Feels a little bit earlier. Feels 80s. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. this is still that, that, that bleed, bleed over. Yeah. Yeah, the seepage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the cultural seepage. The cultural seepage. With the yeah. music and all that. Yeah. I yeah. suppose the style of filmmaking and all that. It feels like a late... Right. It, like, it feels like it was 1989. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't know why, but that is the exact yeah. year. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and directed by Star. Well, directed by. Well, it's directed by Craig R. Baxley. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Craig R. Baxley is known to us here because he directed one of my favorite mo- action movies oh. of the '90s, and that would be "I Come in Peace." Oh. Dolph Lundgren. Were you here for that? I don't think so. Oh shit! I have not Neither seen one that. of you. No. Oh my god, it's great. It's Dolph <laughs> Lundgren as an, a cop, and he is hunting. An alien who comes to Earth who looks like a Viking surfer who shoots CDs from a wrist gauntlet in pursuit of endorphins, which are a drug. Sean, his can home you pick this country, next week? <laughs> or his home planet. And you've missed this. It's called Dark Angel now, but I saw it in the theater and it was ah. called I Come in Peace because that's what the alien says. Did we do this on this show? Yes, we Fuck. did. That means I can't bring it. <laughs> I have to oh, wait five years. I can't believe I missed this. Yeah. I know. Like entirely Shit. as a movie. I know, because this That's is like one of those things, like if you haven't seen it, you should go check it out, because it's one of those underrated, <laughs> like 90s action movies. Uh, he also did Action Jackson. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was a Joel Silver production, oh. which was, I think, the first like leading role action hero role for Carl Weathers. Okay. Which was like 10 years after he was in Rocky. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you would think was, they would make him a... He's a big dude. Like, yeah. he, perfect for an action star. Well, he, and he had worked with Joel Silver the year prior to uh. that uh, on Predator. Okay. So then it was like, okay, let's make right. a, a movie star out of you. Vanity did, and Sharon Stone pre basic instinct during that movie. Did Joel Silver wander over to the set of this movie at some point during the production? He just it, walked by and said, More explosions. You know what? You could blow that up. <laughs> yeah. Does it feel like this is one? This feels like a script that uh, to me, like it, it went through the Joel Silver discard pile or something? It probably. Absolutely yes. seems like it. Probably. Yeah. Um, Craig R. Baxley. Yes. Uh, is yes. Uh, comes he was before he was a director, he was a stunt coordinator. No shit. I kid you not. Feels he like it. Coordinated the stunts on a movie called The Warriors. Ah, wow. Okay. He's also in it in a bit part, but uh, yeah. Parts of uh, this felt like The Warriors <laughs> to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm just throwing that Gangs. out for yeah. something I heard uh, last oh. night that you know. Oh, yeah, oh we can, right. I, I was like, we could sidebar into this if you <laughs> want right. to hear how the audience yeah. feels. All right. So Toby will never know. Oh, yeah. My partner that I've been with for a very long time revealed to me that he had never seen The Warriors, but he prefaced it by being like, if I tell you a secret, will you not make fun of me for it? <laughs> and I was concerned. I was like, oh no, what does this mean? He's like, I've never actually seen because I I reference we were watching something and I reference the Warriors. He's like, well, I've never actually seen it. And I was uh. like. Man, <laughs> I've seen that movie more times than I can count. I feel like I watched that a ton growing up. And remember when the video game came out, yeah. like it got a resurgence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, how did you miss it during the resurgence with the video game? I know my and, dad was very excited when the resurgence. Yeah. happened. He's like, I love this movie. This is yeah. great. Yeah. And, um, but that's and, when they went and made the comic book. Yeah. Transitions in the yes. middle. Yeah. And I was, I'm telling them about it. And he was like, well, honestly, I have no interest in seeing it. So now I feel like oh, our man. marriage is in uh, a difficult that's a lot place. Of, <laughs> like, did you need to be alone for like 10 minutes? I was, First of all, he started with, if I tell you a secret, you yeah, the last well, you're like, it can be anything. See, I was in the bargaining stage of grief. So I was like, uh, I was like, but no, listen, there's a gang that like <laughs> wears overalls and roller skates and they're called the orphans. And they're like real nerds that hang out in the bathroom at the subway station. And I'm like, baseball I'm, gang. and he's like, you're not selling me. And I'm 
I'm like, don't these sound like weird reasons to like <laughs> these are gangs in the that we're supposed to believe exist in New York. Yeah. Like Toby, can you dig it? Toby oh, can't yeah. dig it. <laughs> I said I, I said I said, Can you dig it? They shot Cyrus, none of this sounds familiar to you. Like, He's like no. Yeah, yeah so, all that and knowing Toby, you're gonna get ten minutes into it if you ever do decide to watch it, you'd be like, Oh, I've seen this. Exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, exactly yeah. what's that gonna feels like happen. Toby would do. Yes, like, and oh, I'm gonna yeah. be like, We had a fight over the Warriors for nothing. <laughs> we could have avoided this whole back and forth if you just would have just oh. watched it. And now just here I it. am just throwing gas on the fire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, um, he, he also directed, so I think he got his uh, directorial debut was either on like A-Team or Dukes of Hazard or something mm-hmm. like that. He did some TV and then Makes worked sense. himself up to oh, action more action guys. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is, as Sean said, this is a movie that was made with stunt coordinators in mind. Yes. Because... How many Baxleys were in the in the stunt team? There were at least two Baxleys in the stunt team at the top, so it's a family business. The house that Baxley built, right? Yeah. 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 Did this come off like, well, I guess you guys didn't know anything about this. Nothing. No, no nothing about nothing this. nothing about this. Yeah. I barely, like, the more I see him, the more Brian Bosworth, who is the star of this movie, I don't know if we've mentioned that yet, uh, the more I you say it, it sounds familiar, but I don't think I ever, like, locked into anything he did Never. before. So this was a complete surprise. Yep. So I, I did see this movie in the theater when it came out, but that was probably because I was seeing everything. Right. In this period mm-hmm. of time, I saw everything that was coming out, and I was aware of Brian Bosworth as, like, I knew he was a football player. Mm-hmm. Now I know he played for the Seattle Seahawks okay. for gotcha. a while. Maybe that's He was known him. for his haircuts. No shit. Yep. <laughs> and his designer sunglasses. Love it. Okay, uh, this, this yeah. sounds more familiar. Yes. But the thing that I remembered seeing him in was these right guard commercials oh, where right. anything else is uncivilized. I thought it was Grey Poupon, but it was actually right guard. Right. Oh, this was the whole Grey yeah. Poupon. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to nail down <laughs> if he was in a Grey Poupon uh, commercial or if I'm just losing my mind. Was he in a tux with the sleeves ripped off? Because that would have made <laughs> right, sense. Right, yeah. right. If he's in anything, it feels like that's what it should be. And then all of a sudden he was in a movie, The Boz, Bosworth. <laughs> the uh, Boz. Did yeah. that take off as a nickname for him? I think so, yeah. He was, I think he was the Boz. I you mean, know, people just come like, Boz! Yeah. 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 And then he crushes your little head. <laughs> so that's what they do, right? They take football stars and go like, okay, we're going to make you into an action movie here. Right? Yeah. Football stars, wrestling stars. Mm-hmm. There had to be a few wrestlers in this movie. Yeah, like they're cause strong. They guys looks like they all. Everybody in this movie looks like a professional wrestler yeah. for the most part. Even Bosworth looks like he looks, he like, looks like Lex like Luger one. and John Cena and Randy Orton all shoved together into one mess. But stylized body. like Dog the Bounty Hunter. Stylized like Dog the Bounty Hunter <laughs> with an incredible mullet. Yeah. Um, which just won't quit. It won't. No, it and is a character of its own. Yeah. It's so much like if you look at his, he's got a, a motorcycle in this movie. On the motorcycle, there he's got a a, paint, a beautiful paint job, but it's a skull with the top of his like stark blonde hair, and then his mullet trails off into blue flames. <laughs> I love it's it. gorgeous. <laughs> That's what you should be driving I, around. I just love that he went and commissioned someone to do yes. that. Yeah. Like yes. I oh, I think I said in the in I uh, looked in the credits. He built the motorcycle. His character rode in this movie. Really? Brian Bosworth did, yes. Wait, wait, what? The he, Brian Bosworth, Brian Bosworth built it, or built, the character? No, did. Brian Bosworth built the motorcycle that he rode in this movie. Wow, so he really did go to someone and be like, I need this paint job. Yeah, pretty much. Or he painted himself for all I know. Right. That's I've amazing. ridden on a motorcycle. I've driven a motorcycle, okay. but not like a Harley. I've driven right. like a Kawasaki. And, uh, you know, it was one of the uh, things like, I like four wheels. I do too. At, spe- at high speeds, I'm yeah. that kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Yep, I, uh, I'm too afraid to ride a motorcycle. I'd love to get over that, but just like yeah, the just how exposed you are freaks me out. Yeah, that's a that's a mm-hmm. lot going on there. Yeah, no, especially now, really easy to die. Motorcycles and yeah, you know, like yeah, mm-hmm. not uh, a helmet in this movie. Right. No, no, but no is, because you're a weenie if you were a helmet. Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair, this is the brotherhood. Yeah, because I guess that's the idea, right? That the the motorcycle is the last. Uh, you know, you ride a motorcycle, it's, you're free. It's, it's the, the horse. Your, yeah. it's the horse. It's the yeah. horse of they the modern day. They only use helmets for gift wrap in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're very right. We'll get to that. Yeah. This movie is something else. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, who else is in this movie, Colin? Well, Lance Henriksen. Lance Henriksen is yeah. in this movie, killing he, it, killing it's it. Great. Is this one of Lance Henriksen's greatest movie roles yes. that yes. no one knows about? Yes. yes. Because everybody, definitely is. they all, you know, you think of Lance Henderson, you think of Aliens, probably, mm-hmm. is going to be like his big role. Right. Or yep. maybe. I think a Near Dark. Near Dark. Near dark mm-hmm. Millennium, I think. Millennium like is a millennium. big one, I think, for that. Mm-hmm. Pumpkinhead. Yeah, and Pumpkinhead. Right, yes. I think that's basically, those are yeah. the, the ones that you really think of him. But right. he had like a kind of in the 90s, it was in, you know, mainstream movies, and I think it was because 
or shortly thereafter, Millennium was happening, but Quick and the Dead, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know? Which we um, just talked about like a week or two ago. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah, with, with the Russell uh, Crowe. Uh, Russell Crowe, yep. Right. Um, right. But this one, he's like really, uh, he's the leader of a biker gang, mm-hmm. the Brotherhood, right? Yes. And he's a scary motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes, I guess he's he scary is. in Near Dark. Is there, is there a big wide gulf between this character and Jesse from Near I Dark? Like, yeah. I like this character much better. This character's way more unhinged than... Jesse and your darker, but it's like. the under, it's like behind the eyes on him. Yeah, it's just like it's don't a, poke it's, the crazy it, bear. Right, it's in there. Yeah, like he, he's outwardly crazy as well, but I can feel mm-hmm. it simmering below the surface that he's going to kill somebody. And so. he has that laugh. I guess that mm-hmm. that's an addition for this character. But he's got yeah. long hair and a mustache, and you know, yeah. wears shades all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seems like chainmail T-shirts. Is that why he's called chains? Because he wears the chainmail shirt. Maybe that's it. I didn't notice it before that scene where you mentioned yeah. it, but maybe. I mean, that's just a cool yeah. nickname to have for a biker. Yeah. yeah. Chains. Chains. Yeah. Trouble. Ice. A wall. Ice. Ice. Wasn't there a roach? There, there was, was a roach. roach. Yeah. There was gut. Gut. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Fuck face. I'm pretty sure that was in there, too. Yeah. I don't know. A wall. Speaking of the stunt yes. uh, stunt team. So who who's that? Gregory Scott Cummins. Who is... I mean, he's the star of Action USA, <laughs> and now I want to see him in whatever else he's in. Like, I might have to go through and be like, because he feels like, um, we mentioned the A-Team before, he feels like the guy that got to break out of the mental hospital every episode so that he, right, he can yeah, fly the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, he would be great at that role. Yeah. He's the hero of Action USA is this movie that I think, like, this is part of, I guess, the appeal of these movies mm-hmm. now. It's like, because we don't have anything really like this... Mm-hmm. These movies that were kind of lower tier at the time mm-hmm. they come out are now being reevaluated right. as like forgotten classics of like action movies where they actually did shit for real. Yeah. <laughs> because I guess this is part of the like the tough guy cop mm-hmm. film genre, yeah. right? But this was kind of like at the end of the tough guy, you know? Right, 1990, 91, yeah, yeah. This is when we got into, uh, maybe they went to more towards tv shows you ever see the tv show renegade yeah yeah this feels yeah, like th- this yeah. is much better because renegade's some cheesy right. roundhouse kick shit mm-hmm. yeah and this feels much better but you know mullets and motorcycles and all that stuff kind of feels the same this is way better though well this one was originally going to be directed by uh bruce mal malmouth i think was okay. the original director on this and okay okay so this is significant in this era because he did hard to kill which uh, I want to say, I wait, love Hard to Kill. Was that the first? No, that was the second Steven Seagal movie, Above the Law, number Above, one. I think so. And then Hard to Kill. Hard to Kill. Then, I like Hard to Kill. Damn, what was the other one? The one right after that with William Forsythe. Was am I thinking? Was that Hard to Kill? Is William Forsythe then Hard to Kill? No, I'm getting these on. That's out for justice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all, all the titles sound Kill the justice. same. Yeah, under siege. They all sound like yeah. somebody's going to get what murdered. Hard to kill was the one where Steven Seagal had a character. His name was Mason Storm, and I thought yes. you have reached a zenith. Yes. <laughs> like ridiculous, like you know, <laughs> super Storm. macho action movie hero. Uh, right. Uh, mm-hmm. Names Storm Stone. Um, mm-hmm. But he left the project at mm. some point. Brian Bosworth said personal shit. Yeah. Spilled mm-hmm. over, and so. The original version of this movie, not only was it originally apparently rated NC-17, which as you're watching it, I you're going, see that. yeah, you can? Oh, yeah. A lot of nudity. A lot of nudity. I'm sure, like, the, just the amount of blood and everything, yeah. especially we're getting into 1990, like, yeah. I imagine Tipper Gore has got her clutches in America at this point, right? cracked down on it more. Mm-hmm. Like, this is, yeah, I can imagine this, what they would have cut to make it an R. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because yeah, it's, it's very bloody and people the... getting blown away and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the violence feels more real, which is uh, yeah. The certain movies of like the eighties and nineties, you get that feeling. Mm. Oh, somebody gets shot, you're like, ugh. Yeah, it's, the imp- yeah. it's the way they cut the impact. Yeah, or yeah. It's like, and yeah. I think when a movie's grimy, they automatically like bump it up for some reason. This you know what I'm saying? This is a it grimy is. like. I don't know. Yeah, but also, it's, it's just grimy. I don't know what else to say about it. But also, people get shot and then they get launched 15 feet backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, but it's like, it's like low class. Like, if this was, if this had a little more taste and wasn't so white trash, I think that it'd be a little more forgiving. Does that make sense? There's a classism to it, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. They're, like, yeah. they're, they're big gauging it based on, like, who is the audience for yeah. the movie and how are they going to interpret these images yeah. that right. seeing? Is it going to fuel them into some kind of... Right. So yeah. to... it's, <laughs> not a, it's not a prestige interpretation yeah. of this concept, yeah. you know? If it's saving Private yes. Ryan, exactly. it's a historical thing. Right. It's okay. Yep. And, yeah. Okay, yes. 
Um, but the other thing about this movie is apparently uh, Bosworth's character, and we'll we'll get into you know who he is and all this stuff as we go on. But uh, deleted from the original version of the movie is uh, he had a wife and he oh. had a sister or a daughter, and they died. No, oh, no. he just had them. He had yeah. Oh. So actually, the naked lady in his bed early in the movie, is I think, is his wife. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you not, can just cut around that and be yeah, like, baby, you got to go to work. Yeah. yeah, it seems like it's a one night stand or something. Right. But I think that's what's going on. And that actually makes what happens with, uh, what was her name? Um, Nancy? Nancy. Okay. Like, it puts it in a kind of a different perspective, right? right? right. He's got a wife at home. Yeah, like he's getting too far into it. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. Because I always thought that that relationship was kind of like held back, it felt like, yeah. in the movie. And now it's like, oh, that's probably why, because he's right. married. Right. <laughs> he's right. undercover. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. that makes sense. But as the movie stands, we have to grade it. So uh, what's this movie about, I guess? um what do we have going on? Well, how are we introduced? Because this is the thing. Uh, oh, the grocery store. Yeah. Well, it's, okay. it's Cobra. You take, right, you take the grocery store and then breakfast. Okay, so we have the we have the intro to Cobra where, oh, this, but in this one, it's a group of what looks like it 80s is. garbage wrestlers. Like, <laughs> yes. The forgotten about they lower the class ones, ones. Marketed as the toy the wrestlers that come from like the sewer the and they have ooze on yeah. them and stuff. And that's yeah. how they'd be marketed, yeah. Yeah, and the, the multi pack that comes from like the dollar store. Yeah. So, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that set. Yeah. Where it's just like, <laughs> yeah, an action figure from something and they put the head of a yep. wrestler on it and there's yep. your action Spare parts yes. figures, yeah. yeah so they all hopped up on crank or speed oh, or yeah. something. And yeah. they, they shoot up their grocery store like in cobra mm-hmm. and just like in cobra you know you gotta have a cure for the disease and we have <laughs> the this be mulleted blonde who also looks like a professional wrestler yes, co- come in very casually uh I, he does a trick where he takes a can off the shelf and throws it over to distract them thought that was pretty slick i like that he <laughs> comes the into this because they have this you know the the hero shot how you always you know kind of introduce these mythic you know big screen <laughs> heroes yep. so you see his feet first he's, he's pushing a cart cowboy boots we pan up what's in it yeah he's got saltines and bananas yep Yep. So wait, right. so is, is the grocery store sliding? Is that the new saloon doors? Yes. I think so. Okay, right? yes. that is the modern saloon doors. Yeah. Okay, I like that because that's how they do it. And, and it, it has a sound too. It does. Like it does. Like the saloon doors have the, <laughs> the swing and the creak, and the, yeah. it's got the sh- like the vacuum sound of the doors opening. Yeah. Yep. And you could even do the little ding sometimes, the little alarm yeah, yeah, charms. Yeah, yeah. You yep, could do yeah. that too. I love it. <laughs> I love this comparison. But maybe they are going for a western thing here because he's wearing a straight up duster yes Yes. uh except this one is uh i don't know how any police officer affords it's a full leather (laughs) yeah with full shoulder parts to it that you want to see yeah that looks like it's like reptile leather or something weird going on i mean he's got an interesting fashion sense the Mm -hmm. entire way through the movie when he's actually wearing his biker cut it has uh uh, like a skunk tail yeah uh, on the shoulder just one shoulder just one shoulder yeah that'd be too flamboyant oh yeah (laughs) But it's he's like Judge able Dredd. To... You get all the gold or something. Yeah, inside. yeah, that's how you do it. It's got to be like his stripes. Yeah, yeah, something. exactly. Uh, but he manages to take out everybody in this uh, mm-hmm. grocery store without really breaking a sweat. This is one of those kind While of While eating like, cookies, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, we're in comic book land, right? He's <laughs> right. like, he's super confident that he's going to get these guys, mm-hmm. you know? And he ends up launching one. Right Didn't into a stack like- of cans. Yeah, did he trip? Okay, him or the physics of this. This is where this movie first tipped me off that it was going to be completely naughty. Oh, yeah. But he he kind of tricks the guy to come down the aisle, and he has a bunch of like smashed like it looks like salsa or something on the floor. Like oh, yeah, a bunch there's of something bottles. slick on the floor. Yeah, and but like the bottles are broken too. So I thought he was just going to fall on the broken bottles. No, right? no, that no, is not this movie. He, we can make this into a stunt. He banana peels, <laughs> but fifteen feet. Upwards and forwards, and like, and he flips and he backwards, backwards and lands so his, on a bunch of pop cans. His head's down and his back. It's a wild. The force thing. and speed with which <laughs> he goes flying is like even a even a stretch for the Looney Tunes. It is, and I love that. I love the cut. Like, oh, he's gonna slip, and then it cut to boom, yeah. and he's going super fast <laughs> super into fast. it. I love, yeah, so the, fast that pop cans go flying. Like the juxtaposition of those cuts. projectiles. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. That's because if you're going to do it, damn it, if you're making an action movie, this is how you do it. You have to yeah. go You have to go big. Oh, I mean, yeah. I do remember in 1991 seeing this, and that was the year of Terminator 2, and I think Terminator 2, was was that the biggest movie and right behind, or no, the biggest movie might have been Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah. You know, these were big action T2 things. was the most expensive when it was made, wasn't so, it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. 
And then, you know, when you would go to see like, oh, Brian Bosworth is in an action <laughs> movie. So your your bar is set kind of low because you also had like it was the runoff uh, guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, you had like Seagal mm. is not Stallone or Charles Bronson or, or Clint Eastwood. You know, right. it's like mm-hmm. and then Van Damme and then Don the Dragon Wilson and Jeff Speakman, uh, the perfect weapon. And you're like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah. we're, yeah, and then we're you have like Brian oh, Bosworth yeah. in, in that mix somewhere. So your your expectations are low going into it, and the movie I guess did have a big budget for it. Yeah, I mean it was twenty five million dollars. That's yes, that's a good budget. <laughs> I you can tell. I feel like all that money's on screen. Yeah, like, especially at the end. Yeah, the the third act especially to Holy wrangle shit. all that. Yeah. See, but that surprised me how when we got to the third act because there was like a little part in there. I think when the the deal is going down and all this, and I was like, okay, I've seen this in a bunch of movies, and you know, you, it started to lose me a little bit, mm. and then it rallies. This movie rallies. It the, does. In the, in the it rallies to the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. So who is? Uh, oh, well. Wait. We got to talk about breakfast. Yeah. Breakfast. All right. Oh, uh, so we're on a. We're apparently on a quest to find all the movies with gross blender. Teams. Yeah. Because you know, if you're just a big buff dude, you gotta have. You got weird ways to get your yeah, protein. Iron stomach. You gotta have it. Right? Iron stomach, but you also got to get it from these weird places. So, like you Does said, this all start with like Rocky eating the eggs. I think and so. Stuff like that. Right. And like, and let's we had see to, if we, we had to one up it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With yeah. stolen just eating the pizza with yeah, the, yeah. The scissors. pizza scissors yeah. so what does he start this it's out orange, orange juice and a snickers orange juice a couple snickers there's a banana in there there's chips so, tortilla chips tortilla chips couple eggs mm-hmm. couple eggs tabasco sauce tabasco mm-hmm. sauce on top mm-hmm. and then grind it yeah out. and we're yep. like what in the and it hell? looks like puke when oh it looks like really liquidy hummus and yeah. we're like oh well i guess you got to start your day somehow and mm-hmm. then we realize oh he pours it in a dog bowl dog bowl for fido I think is the thing's yeah. name, and he sets it down. But is and it then a- Sean, you literally said you can't feed that to a dog, <laughs> <laughs> and I was correct yeah. <laughs> because dude's got a fucking Komodo dragon yes. in his, <laughs> as his pet. And the, that- the pan down reveal, you follow the hand holding the bowl down to the floor. I really just want to take oh a look at him and go. <laughs> just waiting for it <laughs> but it's like his one of his best friends like he's yes, moving he around hugging thing. it and he everything. kisses it it's like a little pig yeah, yeah. he dances little pig noises. a little bit yeah, yeah. It's, Which, and it's big see, it's I'm like thinking four feet long yeah, yeah. it's a big big I, I was concerned during this scene it made yeah. me anxious how close he was getting to its face and stuff and man right i'm it. like this must hope this thing's tame yeah because he's nuzzling it this like made me for some reason i don't know where those things are uh natural where do you to, procure them yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but it, for some reason it made me think that this was uh like gonna be a florida set movie or something right, like no, that it feels very florida doesn't right. it but it, it's because i think in my mind uh didn't uh was it crockett or tubbs had an alligator on the boat or or whatever in Miami Ooh. Vice or something. Oh, I don't like, quite remember, but you might like, be right. Okay, this is <laughs> all yeah, right. Okay, your, your hero has this, you know, this monster in his house makes sense. to establish that he's a badass. So right. he is a police officer. It's like getting officer. a tiger as a pet. You're right. Just like, it's a flex, yeah. yeah. So he's a cop in Alabama who's on suspension for something that apparently was cut out of the movie, right, for three weeks. And so at the same time, the Brotherhood, this biker gang from Mississippi mm-hmm. has killed. Uh, we see this in a montage. They murder a priest during, I think, uh, baptism. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gets yes. right. He's blown out a window. Yeah. And then that biker is sentenced to jail, and so they blow up the judge while he's going. <laughs> right. Fishing. They blow up his boat. <laughs> they do. They're, and like when like, we oh, say God. blow up, it's like sky high. Like yeah, these is... are not small explosions. No. <laughs> it's it's like almost too much. It's like who did it? It's I, like, I, we, I don't know. <laughs> people for miles heard and felt that explosion. We're talking about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, well, can you imagine being? One one of the random just townies and being like, God, pe- thing, things just keep blowing up, like constant explosions. Oh, well, it's because you're People in the middle of like a, a mob a war. war. Yeah. Yeah. There's a yeah. war going on here. Um, William Forsyth, uh, we mentioned was in Alpha yes. Justice, he, but he's in this movie too. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's like the third build guy in mm-hmm. the in the cast. So he is chained second in command of the Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Yes. This movie was originally Ice. called. The Brotherhood. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. They changed it to Stone Cold. And I think this is before Stone Cold Steve Austin yeah. came around. But um, yes. So the feds, which are led by Richard Gant, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who you would remember from eating Jason's heart in Friday the 13th, yes. or Jason Goes to Hell. But Indeed. we mm-hmm. have put on the Saturday Night oh. Freak Show Wall of Fame because <laughs> Richard Gant was not only the federal agent in Stone Cold, 
but he was also in Godzilla. Uh-huh. He was Admiral Phelps, and he was also a cop in The Big Lebowski, which we did on this okay. show. All okay. these are episodes wow. we did. So this is thanks to MF Mad. Well, there we go. Thank you, Thank you sir. Freak Show Wall of Fame. Um, we also put, I think we said Craig Baxley, director. Yeah. Because I, don't, of, I don't think we said we put him on there. He's on the wall okay. for The yeah. Warriors, I Come in Peace, and Stone Cold. And we okay. have a couple other inductees as we go. All so, right. Um, a full roster. Okay, so the they're gonna recruit uh, the Joe Huff. Joe right? Huff, yes, yeah, his name is Joe Huff, and they're gonna recruit him to infiltrate because he's busted more uh, bikers than mm-hmm. anyone right in Alabama. Ever, so they're gonna yes. take him over to Mississippi and get him in with the Brotherhood, so he can mm-hmm. catch him in the act. Yep. <laughs> okay, so how's that gonna work? Well, first of all, he's gonna get a partner. Uh, played by, I forgot this guy. And is legally required. This partner needs to be as opposite of him oh, as possible. Oh, so much so. We Just need an odd awkward, couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I swear to God, he didn't have an earring at the beginning of this movie. He got it at the end he to was, be like. Right. To show his transition. Yeah. Like, yeah. Time to turn it on. Yeah. Or turn it up. Like, they give him like he's a hypochondriac or something. Yep. He's yes. afraid of germs and all this other he's stuff. He's very and buttoned talky. up like corporate guy and just. Yeah. He's, all, he's also a nerd because he tries to like follow joe to um like the big biker bar and hang out and tit everything for tat? Yeah. tit for tat yeah tit the for tat, tit for tat. <laughs> <laughs> tries to go into the tit for tat comes dressed in just the nerdiest what you think like i'm a biker he's like got a denim jacket and with a, the collar pop collar like, popped it's too much although he mentions yeah. that because yeah. he knows the yeah. headband and all that stuff yep. yeah but they go in there so this is a, a mo- or it's a biker owned bar um that basically Joe is going to somehow now he has the alias Joe Stone yes. right John Stone Jack Stone John Stone I think John goes, Stone John Stone is it, is it Joe uh, I thought he goes by Joe I don't know. I don't know. It was John, because when John? later he's fi- found out Forsyth's it's like hey Joe and it's like oh no he knows who okay. he is yeah. And, yeah. Um, right. well, before, but before they go in the tit for tat when he like roughs up his outfit a little bit to make him look more like a biker. Has anybody else ever wanted to pull the sleeves oh, off a jacket all like the time. that in a movie? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to see if I can do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I've, but I've always wanted to do it to like a, a tux because because I'm not trying to rip a denim jacket. That man is strong. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I feel like I go up to like a, a nice tux? shirt or a tux and be like, whoosh. Yeah. Is that something that is just required of this kind of thing? Like, you know, since you have a guy who's got all these muscles, it's like Gotta he's going to be able to do these like, you know, because yeah. ultimately this is going to come into effect in the, in the third act. Mm. You know, there's it's certain death or muscles. You yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see. The, I want to see the outtake where he pulls on it and just pulls the guy to the ground because it doesn't rip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pulls yeah. him right down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That would be funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't didn't Did, give away didn't, that time. Didn't realize you were so delicate. Do you think the costume department like loosens up a bunch of threads so it tears off easier or something? I There's some breakaway. So. Yeah, I think they, thing, no. right? I think they wanted to and they mentioned it and he's just like. And then he ripped one off uh, no, for real. And I, like, okay, I, I think guess we they don't told to. him they didn't loosen them, but they actually did. Is what I think. I know because he <laughs> built the bike that he rides. Yeah, in this movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, and also, I think this is another thing that was a prerequisite of this era was the stopover at the strip club. In always of these cop movies, you'd always end up at a strip club at some point mm-hmm. yeah. for some, uh, you know, exposition. To right, because whoever you're looking for is usually at the strip club. Yeah. Whether or, it's one or of the, the dancers or one of the creeps. Yeah, the person that will lead you to who you're trying to find yes, will be at yes. the strip this club. This is the no law doubt. and order, the person that leads you to the person that leads you to the suspect. I yes. mean, the Batman did this basically, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still doing it. Yeah. yeah. Beverly Hills Cop for mm-hmm. some reason. You know, well, sure, oh, yeah. I'm like, that can't be the first. There had to be like, you know, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Cuffs. Um, I'll throw that out there again. <laughs> um, so Stone, right? Joe Huff slash jo- uh, uh, Jack Stone, John Stone, John Stone introduces himself, I guess, in some way to uh, William Forsyth, right? Ice. Uh, yes. And so there is an ensuing bar fight. Mm-hmm. And during the bar fight, he is able to protect Ice and his courier or whoever, the, the other guy, the mm-hmm. harmonica player, is right. that Roach or whatever. Gut. That's gut, gut. right? Yep. And therefore, you know, kind of proves that he is protecting. Right. Later, the, they said you did good and, and everything. Yeah. So yep. he so kind of helps them out of a, a jam. And so then he is invited at, to be to prospect for the Brotherhood at their rally. Yes. Now, this is a big centerpiece in the movie because we are exposed to biker life. Right? <laughs> Biker life. Which is something else because basically it is uh, a bunch of guys hanging out, 
fighting each other, dragging each other through the streets yep. on their bikes, yep. racing each other, shooting beer cans off. Oh yeah. my! This <laughs> great intro this, for characters, yeah. but this is ri- <laughs> obviously ridiculous, but in such a good way. It just. <laughs> I had the same thoughts watching this that I had watching the whole, what, seven seasons of Sons of Anarchy I watched. <laughs> Why would anyone want to live this way? Because you just fucking it around seems all miserable. day. I mean, I guess so. But, but you could die at any moment. Well, yeah. But that's part of the thrill. But also, I think these people are just, they're all brought up in this yeah. lifestyle. It's just like, well, they know nothing else. But I mean, just like, ridiculous good stuff happens like, to people in a life like this, well, you know. But they're just having fun all the right, time. Right, beer cans That's on the head, it, yeah. and it they try and shoot it off with fun. a machine gun. It doesn't always look fun. I mean, yeah, I won't. I don't want this yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. I don't want people shooting at me to getting beer cans <laughs> off yeah. shit. No, not even if they're good shot or not. Well, I like uh, when uh, when uh, uh, Joe comes into the scene. Like the first thing, basically, I think he does right. Well, he does the you know. First of all, he got a race uh, Forsyth. Yep. And he wins because he ducks down and becomes a little more aerodynamic. <laughs> that's, <right there>. that's <laughs> it. He just like he throttled up at the end, and that was it. Yep. And then the next thing is you got to prove that your feats of strength. Yep. And so he just walks up to like, they have the fighter pit ring and just wanders in there and gets in a fight with this guy, which is I guess when he attracts the attention of Chains. Yeah, know, who's and, watching yeah. him in the crowd and everything. Whoever can beat the very big man in the middle of the. The fighting pit, and they have a good fight. Again, there's some wrestling moves, some backbreakers, some clotheslines, and whatnot. <laughs> All executed with like these close up, uh, you know, right underneath people. Is yeah, being- and it feels and like it. That photography, it makes it feel rough. Mm-hmm. It makes it feel like it hurts. You know, I feel an impact. But I think this is something that is, um, you know, you don't get. That's exactly the thing that kind of makes. You know, you were saying the impact of mm-hmm. this kind of stuff that makes it feel a little more harder. Yeah. It is the way that it's shot and cut. And I don't, I'm like, you know, this would be one of those movies that you should probably look at if you're trying to, you know, make a, a, an impactful, you that know, be kind of a hard action movie. Right. It's like, how do they cut to make it? The impacts feel like they hurt. You right. Know? You could study those in this. Like, this is a great action movie for it, too. Yeah. There, this were would a couple, be good. there was another movie that we had that with uh not too long ago i thought that we talked about where it was like the the way that they would cut it was just somebody being slammed into and it was a director that we had been talking about maybe it'll come back to me we've seen a lot of fights yeah um so once we have joe in the scene then he is prospected by the brotherhood i like the way that they're just like uh hey you can have my old lady for you know a couple, yeah you know this is giving their women away that's a lot in this movie <laughs> yeah I mean, there's like communal showering. Uh, there's also <laughs> yeah. kids. Uh, that just kids that r- live in this c- uh, commune. Nobody's yeah. showering. They were just posed, oh, nude, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> doing their hair. <laughs> just like, oh, wow. Yeah, there's something else. It's to an like open and free society, yes. whatever. But they Not have, really. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules. <laughs> so what are some of those? Because we find out when uh, when uh, Chains is given the thing about the, the, the jacket. It may Being look like a, in, yeah. a oh, yeah. brag to the normal guys out there. But to me... I know he's a Nazi hate speecher, but this is a good like, monologue <laughs> yeah. for him. Like, I felt what yeah. he felt towards it. Like I, I understand that it's like, this is what I'll die for this. Yeah, it's part again. It's just part of his creepy character. This very good character. Wasn't like going. some of it is like you know that thing never comes off. If it hits the ground, you know, even I in a fight, yeah. he said, yeah, then it's like then they're gonna kill you mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's like really hardcore, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so you're supposed to get the idea that this is a they play hard, and they fight hard, and they're super close knit. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. The group. Did, in Sons of Anarchy, I think there was a couple guys that had like the patch tattooed on their back, and then when they got kicked out, they had like burned it off or oh, like saying, used they, like, acid. To cut, I think that too. Ooh, there was some yeah. sort of I remember a grotesque scene like that of them burning it off. And most of the, there. I suppose you know, because this is uh, taking place in the South uh, in the '90s, there is like a lot of you know um, Dixie beer and mm-hmm. uh, uh, Confederate Nazi flags. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, iconography mm-hmm. of the Confederacy. They never, in this. they never mention anything about this, but it's like there. All it's in a lot of scenes. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of Nazi flags around too. Yeah, a lot of SS yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. So the main antagonist is the Whip Whipperton. Am I getting this right? Are we are we sympathetic to the plight of the no. of okay. Whipperton no. of the Whip? No. No. no are no, we no. sympathetic to the plight of the the, the Brotherhood? <laughs> Well, I admire they are their loyalty. A... <laughs> I would say that much. <laughs> They killed no. so many people to get this guy out. Oh my god, this guy should feel like this is yeah, the highest compliment, like, who right? Who is this guy? Is this his stepbrother? Or yeah, why are like, they so committed to this? Yeah, this feels- I, see that would be a, a good 
like if they had put that in that it was chains this is the guy who shot the priest at the beginning that yes. kind of gets yeah. this whole thing who doesn't going. have a line of dialogue in this movie no right. and so much is done in his name if although he was a relative or something but he's right. not as far as we can tell you know we don't even know what happened to him right. at the end of the no. movie no it's true i think it is all for a bigger plan like i don't think this isn't all just for the guy like chains has a bigger uh, a bigger plan involved in, with, you know, killing more people in explosions, apparently. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the state's attorney, the Whipperton. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Or is he, and he's running for governor? Yep. Okay, yeah. And he's he running for governor. a hardline, uh, you know. Death penalty. Yeah, yeah. against bikers specifically. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is the underground, uh, you know, and we're right. going to take it out. So they're, they're ultimately, they're going to, they're, this is the, the plan that I guess Chains has cooking in the background. They're, sure, they're yes. They're going to crack the whip. They're going to kill this guy. Mm. And um, so Joe has to get in with this group. And so the first thing I guess that they have him do is they, uh, you know, say, I, I need an ear off mm. of this uh, Colombian guy who gave them some bad drugs or somehow fucked oh, up a drug deal. No, no. He passed through their territory with like two kilos of stuff mm. is why. And so like, you know, it's our territory. You can't do that. Sort of like. So we're going to get our cop to, you know, to prove that his loyalty, prove that he's not a cop. He's got to bring back this guy. He's got to kill him and bring back the ear. Yes. And the guy has like a spider tattoo inside his ear. Yes. So we know it'll be him. Yes. So they have to come up with a creative way to solve this problem. <laughs> I think there should have been more time spent on this. Uh, just a little bit more. Well, this is also like one of those like movie contrivances yeah. where it happens the way it does. So it can pay off later in the movie mm. because basically... I guess we're, you know, as we're jumping around in this narrative, but basically they, they catch Joe goes in and catches this guy and then they end up tattooing the, uh, the same tattoo on a corpse's ear yes. and then they put him on a plane and send him, you know, deport him. This right? montage was really cool how they did this whole thing. They moved through it pretty quickly. Yeah. And, yeah. and you understand yeah. what's yeah. happening yeah. and all that other stuff. And you're like, okay, well he's out of the movie, but right. He right. knows who. The identity that Joe's a cop, mm -hmm. and so he will show up in the later half of the movie mm -hmm. to blow his uh, cover. So mm -hmm. you go like, well, it happened that way in the movie because we got to blow his cover later on. But it's like, would Joe be the guy to arrest him if you were actually going to do this? <laughs> like, right. have somebody else arrest right. him? Right, right, <laughs> right. That's a good point. Yeah. Right, so you can keep that cover. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh. but it's a movie, so yep. we want to, you know. Um, it is a movie with explosions. With explosions. And speaking of explosions, right? So uh, there is, um, I'm trying to think, was there, I mean, there's a lot of fight scenes and that and, you yeah. know, between the bikers, but basically, and there's a little bit of a hinted romance between mm. uh, Lance Henriksen's girlfriend. Nancy. Yeah. Nancy. Nancy, yeah. And Joe, because I think the, the, the thing, he's like protective uh, and, in a way. And that, also she's the witness that he wants to like extract out of there because she can like get him. I think she can get him dead to rights on the things they've done. And or she's at least ready that's to leave. Yeah. yeah. She's ready to leave and wants to use her as a witness, especially after she sees him murder people. But yeah. I think because there's, there's a couple of like uh, characters in this that have like a, there's like a, a moral dile a dilemma between some of the members of the club mm -hmm. yes. where you get the impression that like, okay, this club is not necessarily up to, you know, above board. It wasn't always like this. It doesn't feel like it's like these two it's guys escalating, yeah. have yeah. kind of taking it over the top to like, now we're going to kill people and, you know, we're going to, yeah, and they so take two people and put them in crates and just shoot them point blank for yeah. fun. And, army guys. Yeah. And the National Guard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what turns a lot of people. It's what Nancy it makes Nancy question things. And then gut. Gut. It's is, like he yeah. says you're way out of line, which as soon as he said that, I was like, you, you gone. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. You can't say that to the leader of your gang. No. What do they do to him? OK, well, what I thought they were going to do is I thought they were going to wrestle him to the ground and put the, the colors on the ground and then do something because uh. they were kind of lowering him to the ground. I was like, oh, he said the biggest no, no is letting it touch the ground. Uh. So they're going to do that as like a form of humiliation and a way to be like, you're out. But instead, they're like, go rev up your bike. And then he starts freaking out immediately. And I was like, OK, so he knows what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And they take his hand and force it into what, like the spokes on the yeah. wheel that are spinning on the bike. Uh, it's uh, that's brutal. Yeah, we it never is see it. No, we could have used no. probably like two more seconds yeah. into the buzz yeah. yep. and then cut away. Yeah. But 
Yeah, yeah I that's wonder brutal. if that was like a, something that got taken out. Probably. I was. I thought they were going to draw and quarter him with four motorcycles. I was like, yeah, oh. that'd be awesome. <laughs> Damn, yeah. that would be. You'd have to do a lot of motorcycling to. If they can oh. do it with horses, you can do it with motorcycles. That's true. Well, there's, yeah. there's, uh, there is some. Uh, uh, I know that there's a spectacular kind of stunt piece that happens like uh, m- a little more than midway through the movie. But before that, there's also this. Uh, dynamic between the brotherhood and the italian mafia right mm-hmm. which becomes like a big uh sticking point because the you know it's like the mobs like get out of our town or whatever mm-hmm. but they are they do have some kind of business relationship right. mm-hmm. yeah and so there's uh because that car exploded, right? Am I remembering this right? There's like yeah. sh- shots being fired, cars explode. We got Joe on the uh, the hood of a car. Yep. Right. Uh, going the the oh, mob yeah. steals the cash drop. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then they uh, end up cutting that guy's head off. And uh, oh yeah, because oh he, my god, well, the slot he versus snob scene. Yeah. He's yeah, because he steals the money from the drop and says, uh. uh Stay out of my territory, because that's apparently what he thinks it was. And so and then Shane shows up at a very fancy, nice restaurant to meet with the Italians or to offer It's them like a these deal bikers walked into Goodfellas and got a table, you know? That's what <laughs> it, it is, feels like. It is, yeah. Um and then they bring in just a motorcycle helmet for the man. And you know what's gonna happen. It's in a box though. It's it in, is a in a nice box. gift wrap yeah. box. Nice gift wrap they box. They lift it up, it's a motorcycle helmet, and which this is the one only helmet we see in this whole movie, right? I mean it really yeah. is, yeah. And he shouldn't have said open it though. He should have just been like, yeah, just yeah, open the just visor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but inside there's the some visor, eyeballs yeah. looking yeah. out at his head. Yeah. yeah, which is great. They're mm-hmm. getting their message across. So yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, that guy who plays the ultimate mob boss mm-hmm. looks familiar to you because he was Kenny in RoboCop, who ended up becoming the test subject of ED209 in the boardroom. Oh. <laughs> You have 10 seconds to comply. Yes. And, oh, he got uh, blown to shit. He was also the head of the cocaine cowboy whatever uh, group in I Come in Peace. And now he's in this. Oh. So we have now. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Actor Kevin Page uh, Thank you, sir. is the now on the, uh, the hallway. Yeah. Right? Bravo. Uh, we should also mention um, in the cast uh, of Bikers. There is one biker who stands out, yes. <laughs> who's like the movie biker. Right, because right. you see him in a lot of stuff. You know him from like Terminator 2 at the opening. He's the guy that Schwarzenegger steals his, his clothes, his boots, and his motorcycle. Yeah. Yep, and yeah. he's in Near Dark in the, yep. uh, the whatever, the bar scene yeah. there. Mm-hmm. He gets roughed up. And uh, we have covered, of course, both of those movies on this show. And so this puts... Uh, Robert Winley nice. is his name, the cigar biker from Very Terminator nice. 2. Uh, Congratulations, sir. Yep, is on you forgot the... to say please. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, is he hallway or is he the, mm, the wall? He's on the corner that turns okay, between the, the two. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, uh, he's on my wall. Let's put that. Because I mean, like he's, wall. he's yeah. on the. I mean, he's the biker. In he's those, the biker, those, right? Yeah. He's, I will forever know him. Yeah. He's the cinema biker. I die, yeah. If he that shaves he is that biker. his beard, we will have no idea. Oh, no, no idea. No. I'm curious yeah. now. So he he is to bikers what Buck Flower is to homeless drunks. Basically, yeah. <laughs> right there we go. Yeah, I mean, that's, good equipment. But that's yeah. uh, you know job security, right? You know, yeah. Like, oh yeah. No, I'd love to have a career like that. If I was going to be an actor, that's the career I'd want. You're in all these iconic movies. Somewhat memorable. You get a good paycheck. You get residuals. Yeah. He Plus, can, probably just his lifestyle. He's just yeah. biking when he's not doing movies and stuff. Well, maybe so, not this hardcore. So this movie. So then there's 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 a scene where uh, um, Joe's cover gets blown right mm-hmm. um, by yes. uh, by his uh, uh, FBI informant dude. Right. He does. He goes to meet him. And then ice shows up. Yeah. Uh, and so there's a big chase down the street and there's a bunch of ice has like a machine gun that he at one point used to, I think, shoot a beer can off of uh, Robert Winley's shoulder yes. in the aforementioned uh, rally Beautiful. scene. Um, but he is killed because his bike hits a car and it explodes. Uh, just <laughs> right. <laughs> right off the bat. It's I mean, they go through. There's a whole motorcycle chase that is actually pretty good because it looks like they're going high speed between the cars and everything. Yeah. So yeah. it's good stunts. But then at a certain point, he yeah, just right front into a car. Mm-hmm. And you see it from a, the side profile view. And it's it's brutal. And it's another one of those things that it just the impact is just yeah. brutal because mm-hmm. yeah. it's instantaneous as soon as he hits the car that it explodes. Yeah. These are all like Corvairs. But he, he, so he's burned. 
Yeah. And he's dead. <laughs> yes. You know, so he he's almost dead. Yeah. And so he ends up getting a Viking funeral. Well, he, what does he say? F- uh, fuck you, cop. Yeah. Was his, mm-hmm. was his last words and everything. Yep. Yeah. And he so knows he's, he's a cop. Yep. And he does get a Viking funeral. You are correct. Yeah. I was not expecting this. Okay. I don't know how they got the body, but this is great. But Viking funeral sounds classier than what we see here. <laughs> I mean, this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they basically mount his body. Vikings to, are not um, classy. But they like, it's at least like they lay you down, fold your arms, put your valuables on you. You're not posed on top of your. I think he's got. He's, that's, he's, 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 <laughs> this is how he wanted to go this out. Is, yeah. Yeah. This is exactly. <laughs> on top of a pyre. This is top. Like, <laughs> this is top tier. Send off for these guys. That I know I understand life. that, but I'm just saying this is the white trash version of a oh, Viking oh, funeral. Oh, is all I'm saying. They pose him on top of his bike on top of a pyre in the middle of this party. Just his corpse hanging out on his mm-hmm. bike up there. And Shove a cigar in his fire. mouth yep. and light him <laughs> up. Yeah, yep. And Lance Henderson is all for us. Like, yep. this is it. You live this way, you die this way. Yep. Yeah. That's how you go out. Do you think the thought is like, you know, how some cultures believe you need to be like buried with a horse so that you would have something yeah. to ride in the afterlife? Yeah. Yeah. Is like oh, yeah. the bike oh, yeah. is definitely yeah. like, yeah. so you can have. They're pulling on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Drawn from that yep. for sure. Gotta have that bike in the yep. afterlife. Well, they also, they take care of the other guy who's uh, wounded in the uh, the drop where the mob steals the mm-hmm. money. Like, he gets horribly burned and mm-hmm. just wants to die. Oh, yeah. yeah he gets, they throw a grenade at him. Yeah. In the oh. middle of daylight, just hugging grenades they, into oh, a neighborhood. Oh, that's another good one. They're driving by, they throw it in, and he gets blasted through the front of a storefront. Yeah. Oh, that's so, that was yeah. good. <laughs> they didn't even hesitate. They saw him and just immediately pulled that pin. It was... <laughs> It's quick. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. It's quick. That's yeah. what the mob's doing. Just yeah. Riding around looking for these bikers. They yeah. always have their hand ready to pull that yeah. pin. Yeah. yeah. So the plot, uh, so Joe, his, he is able to, uh, well, I think at one point we thought he confessed to Nancy that he was a cop. Because, yeah, we th- uh, I thought, but it apparently It sounded we like he said, you're right, I'm a cop. That's what I heard. But maybe she didn't believe it because he kind of did it in a flippant way and yeah. walked away. Yeah. Because yeah. she inter- I intercepts of. a phone call where they did, I, my, in my memory, it was like, he's a cop, but it was somebody, yeah. you know, working for the bikers with the, with the police who mm-hmm. says- you know, his his name is cross-indexed. Right. <laughs> Whatever with this Joe Huff guy from And I Alabama. love the way she says it, because it's like, <laughs> your name's Joe Huff. It was cross-indexed. She yeah. has yeah. no yeah. idea yeah. what yeah. that means. <laughs> she just knows it's fishy. Damn oh, it. Which is, it's great. Forsyth and Chains, uh, I guess before we leave him, it's like he has, like, he's the only one who s- really suspects what's going on. Right. Yes. He is, like, the smartest right. one. Of, right. Like, Chains is so preoccupied with like this revenge thing yes. against the well, this is the the defense of the state's attorney yes right that he's not seeing like what's actually happening in front of him but eventually he does there's a drug deal that they engineer uh oh yeah they come up with a drug deal for p2p which is a biker crank it's mm-hmm. it's uh meth at that okay point. so when they meet with the mob at the fancy restaurant though and they show off the p2p and then he tells them like oh i wouldn't sniff that i if wouldn't I sniff that, that shit bro no, is that because he go blind. Well, it was actually drugs, or is that because it was wasn't actually drugs, and he didn't want him to like not because it just looks like water in a little I mean, while. It does, I think it was supposed to be okay. Right? Well, I, mean, I just yeah. wasn't. I wasn't sure if Stone was pulling one over on everybody uh, by just being like, gotcha. it's, it, "Look what oh. I got," and it was just water. You know, yeah. no, I thought that was pretty funny. He's like, "You're gonna go fucking blind, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sniff it." Well, they end up uh, arranging this this drug buy which goes bad because uh chains has his own you know way that he's going to do this is right a faked uh you know death of a uh, operative and all this other stuff but mm-hmm. um i guess what we find out is like you know it's like oh no the stakes all of a sudden go up because now he's going to use the profits of this sale to f- somehow fund this like we're cracking the whip uh, you mm-hmm. know, like assassination plot. Yeah. And so Joe has to take it on his own to go after the mob who's driving the truck and shoot, separate the, the trailer from the, the, the truck and the truck crashes into a gas station Again. and explodes and kills whoever's inside. S- the, the, some the poor clerk. Station. Oh my God. <laughs> Just wouldn't even flash. know. Yeah. They never Stock knew what happened. Turkey yeah. and he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> the collateral damage in these movies is never addressed. No. no and it never should be. It's one of the the issues you know at the time with like you know all these car chases that go down uh you know sidewalks has there been yeah. a movie made though about like the perspective of the people in the collateral damage i don't know it's called I don't hancock know. oh yeah that's oh, right is yeah. It? Yeah, yeah they kind of do with his he causes a lot of damage that in that it's not great yeah yeah i heard it's about all bad, the not great scenes so yeah but yeah they kind of deal with his collateral damage is that what free guy people. is free guy doing that little no. bit of that too no okay no. 
I mean, that's the thick question. Though. It's like, do you actually want to see that? Because no, I don't. Like yeah, bummer, but in movies you know? like no, this, no, I don't. No, no, you'd, no, 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 no you'd that. have to make it like a comedic approach. Mm. Like, God, my house got blown up like fucking again. Like, you'd have to make it. Yeah, it's almost right. it's that's almost the only way you levels of uh, last action hero. Yeah, like giant explosions, cops and trees and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, wonderful. Now, why he thinks I don't know why he thinks he should be able to go back to the gang after he's done this. Because he's got to be like the main suspect of this, right? They never address it. They that's, never address it. Guess, it is dropped. Yeah, because I'm like, well, does that mean their plan can't go forward? Apparently it still can, even though like the funding just went up in smoke. Nobody seems to accuse him. But when he yeah. goes back there, you know, because he's like the witness is still there. And like, I'm still, you know, it's my thing. I still got to like get these guys. Yeah. Uh, it turns out the the Colombian dude is returned, sells him out. Yep, get up the info, and so and so then Chains kills Nancy in front of him, which always kind of bummed me out for some reason. Yeah. When I saw this movie, I'm like, ah, this movie, something wrong with it. I don't like it at mm-hmm. the end of it. And I think it was because I actually kind of was rooting for him to get her out of that situation. Right. Yeah. It was. I I was surprised. I was just like, oh shit. I, I was surprised they did it. Yeah, I yeah. was too. But I'm also. But Lance Henderson's a bad motherfucker in this mm-hmm. movie. So he is. He's stone cold he himself. Is. Really, he is he lizard like. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally, yes. Yeah, he does not care. And then they don't kill Brian Bosworth, uh, but they're going to. What no. their plan is, <laughs> if I have this correct, okay, yeah. they are going to put him in a chopper that's piloted by Vietnam veteran AWOL who's yes. going to fly over the city of, uh, well, I guess they actually filmed it in Little Rock, oh, Arkansas, they? but okay. it's standing uh, in For place me. for Mississippi. Yeah. Uh, so the, Like the, the Mississippi State Capitol yeah. 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 is where they're at. They're yes. Like full yeah. looking big Capitol building. Yeah. But it's actually filmed in Arkansas and it's amazing to me watching the end of this movie that the Secretary of State like said, yeah, come on and do it because I'm watching like bikers like revving up their tires yeah. on the, the the marble floor in the building. They <laughs> literally the stormed the Capitol. They stormed the Capitol. They stormed yeah. the Capitol. Yeah, and it's amazing. Yeah. You're just like, how? Who would allow this to happen? Right. <laughs> right. What were the perks of allowing this movie to come in and do this? You said well, what they, was the budget twenty five million. Twenty five million. Yeah. They said at the time that I think uh, the film company had put two million into the Little Rock economy. The economy, yeah, the yeah. economy, uh, yeah. just from being there. And they had also used the same Secretary of State had also allowed under siege. Okay. Oh, nice. To nice. use it as the U.S. Capitol building, I guess, okay. in, the, in that movie. But um, this is a good Secretary of State. Like yeah. he knows, is like I got to bring in. We got to bring in money. Of this economy. It's, um, I mean, it's amazing because it does not look like a set. No, right? it is full scale, <laughs> huge. Like they're, uh, uh, the army is pulling up in trucks. There's barriers. There's crowds. We're at the goddamn Capitol. There's a helicopter uh, riding the street up to the Capitol. It's like it amazing. is two feet <laughs> yeah. above ground. Yes. And it's really there. It's yep. there. Stunt and pilots it's all going. doing this stuff. So they're, they're playing. Uh, yes. Let me get this straight. Okay, mm-hmm. so Lance Henriksen is going to cut his hair and appear as Lance Henriksen. Yes. Uh, as, as a priest. As yeah. a priest. Which is uh, great. And he's going to get into the courtroom, and as the verdict's being read, he is just going to open fire and blast the shit out of everybody. But the way that he's going to get away with this is because every, all the National Guard who are there to defend the Capitol are going to be distracted by the fact that they're going to launch Joe out of the helicopter with a bomb strapped yes. to him and he's going to explode over the city. That, yep. <laughs> Which would be a great distraction. you like, oh, wow, I haven't yeah. seen that one before. Yeah. But, okay, the way he gets into the Capitol, dresses the priests as they, they like are metal detecting everybody and his goes off and he's like, oh, it's just my rosary or whatever. Yeah. But w- the way he gets his gun is he has it taped to the underside of the church pew. Yeah. He's, he's got people everywhere. He's well, got a cop in the Someone had Biloxi. to go in right, that's what I'm and saying. tape like, it and then say, you have to sit in this seat. No <laughs> right. one else can sit in yeah, this seat. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're, you know, did he have somebody actually assign seating in the courtroom? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Because it's full. There's people on either side of him. Yeah. So he sits even one seat down and it's not going to go He off. massacres everyone in there. He kills yeah. the whip. You know, he shoots him. And then he, he, he kills uh, uh, so one guy. I don't know who he's sitting the behind. The state Does Supreme it, Court. He takes out. He takes out the state Supreme Court. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. Very bloody. Oh, uh, oh, very and bloody. then he, they like pull a, a, a trailer up to the window and smash that. And then like. All oh, these yeah. bikers are just riding through the, it's the amazing. corridors yeah. of the state capitol. Think of any big marble and gold building you've ever, like, you've seen the interior. It's all marble and everything. It's, it's just like bikers. the mausoleum and phantasm. Yeah. 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 Through it. 
and it's crazy. I mean, because that was, I think it was when I saw that like burning rubber on the floor. I'm like, that better be an insert <laughs> shot from yeah. somewhere else because I'm like, somebody's got hell to pay for that. Yeah. Um, a good buff will take that out. It'll be fine. <laughs> but so the plan, as far as I understand, right, is that the way they're getting out of here with the uh, convict, uh, yes. biker, uh, they're going to get out with the helicopter. Yes. Right. But the Seems problem the is, plan. is that uh, Joe Huff is fucking the Hulk and he <laughs> breaks the transmission or brake break fluid line, you know, cause it, ah, it just breaks it off and then throws another guy out and he explodes. Yeah. They the get the bomb on him and throws him out. Yep. yep. And then, uh, so they're going to escape with the helicopter, but now Joe is in control of the helicopter, but then he fucking, well, he's know, strangling, uh, <laughs> he's strangling the helicopter pilot and mm-hmm. they're having a big old fight and then they get closer and closer to the Capitol and Joe jumps out, through the skylights yeah. yes. into the building. And he's fine. And he's fine. <laughs> yep. And they, well, I mean, his dummy was not fine because that's <laughs> right. what we saw going through that window. But yeah, but he's, he's very bloody at this point, mm-hmm. all messed up. Um, and then he's making his way through trying to look for, for Lance Hendrickson for yeah. chains at this point. Yeah. And other things are going on. Like there's one guy who drove a truck in, who drove the truck in that let the bikers out. He's rooting them on, but he gets shot from behind. Yep. There's another guy who gets shot out of a window. And one of my favorites since the movie lands on a fucking car. Oh yeah. Hard. That was, hard. That was wasn't that Robert? Uh, that was, uh, was Robert. Oh yeah. I think oh, yeah. Yeah. he's got the hostage. Oh, because gut guts. Gut right. It's like our is, sympathetic you know, biker. Yes. right? Yes. Who's like, he doesn't really want to be part of it. Now he's missing a hand. Uh, yeah. is there. And he's like, we shouldn't be doing this, man. And uh, yeah, he gets blasted by Robert Winley. And so uh, Joe blows Robert Winley uh, out the goddamn window. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we just cut to a shot of a car. And I'm just like, we're waiting for it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Wham. Right into that car. It's such a great stunt. And the, um, maybe the sound work. We also got to give props to them, too, because it yeah. sounds great when he hits it. Mm-hmm. Sounds hard. Mm-hmm. The only thing that this was missing was a rocket launcher. Yeah. I thought it was coming. I do feel like we were missing that. Because actually, that reminds me, doesn't Lance Henriksen go up? Oh, he was in Hard Target also in like 91, 92, right? The John know. Woo. When John Woo came over, did Jean-Claude Van Damme's Hard Target? I have okay. not seen Hard Target. It's been, seen my, it's, been it. it's been on my freak show list <laughs> for a very long time because I saw the snake scene and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So there is a spectacular moment uh, that comes up where uh, uh, Lance Hendrickson tells his buddy on the bike, like, go take him, take him down. Because Joe's just standing at the end of a hallway and it's going to be like a a standoff, you know, uh, which is preposterous the way it is. Because I'm like, yeah, go just shoot the guy, (laughs) whatever. Right. (laughs) And the hell the 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 bike oh because he does actually shoot this. the guy off the bike he right? does but there happens to be a window behind him colin and it just so happens <laughs> that the helicopter is hovering right outside this window oh. and so the bike <laughs> the bike flies out into the helicopter exploding it and i think Goodbye. this is the first time that i saw a motorcycle take down a helicopter yeah. right because uh, I know the team one, the T one thousand gets on to right, gets on one. the helicopter through, and then you know there was a joke made about you killed a helicopter with a bike and live uh, free and die hard. Right, right, right. Uh, but I it, and that was all CG. This actually yeah. looks this like true. that fucking bike comes out there. <laughs> it does. Capital window. It does. Blows thing up and we're like, what's the budget on this <laughs> right. movie? This is, that was amazing. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I thought they were going to fake us out and it was going to go through the open compartment of the helicopter oh, and come yeah. out the other also side. Also would have been cool yeah. if they could have pulled that I off. I thought it was going to go out the other side and then like, like land fake on, out. You thought it was going to explode. And then it should just land on some random, random biker dude at the bottom. No, yeah. it should yeah. land on the guy that landed on the car. Just like, oh, oh, that would have been funny. Looney Tunes. I I would have laughed yeah. very hard at that. <laughs> <laughs> How much would it have been, have been improved with the addition of a rocket launcher? I mean, well, I think, you know, like, what was it? Uh, Invasion USA or yes. Grizzly, you know, like, yeah. you always we've, no, like, we've had some, I mean, hard Death, to get to Death Hawaii. Wish, we've yeah. had some good rocket Death launchers. Death Wish 3. Death Wish 3. Yeah. You always end with the, the yeah, yeah, I think they're, they were hoping, like, the bomb and the guy who got thrown out of the copter would sate that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, considering Lance Henriksen. I like the way he died. How does he so. die? Okay, okay so, so this is the thing. Yeah. Well, we get and to I the get end. there's an arc that they're going for here, but go ahead. Right. Well, we get to the end, and then we're just down to after the helicopter and all that stuff gets exploded. We're down to Lance Henriksen and Joe. And so uh, do they shoot at each other or are they just getting a fist fight at this point? It seems like because uh, at some point 
Lance Henderson's trying to get to his weapon. Oh, right. Yeah, he does knock him down. They do fight a little bit, and Lance Henderson's going to get to his weapon. Um, but then he, like, he, he he's like, you know, he doesn't actually shoot him, and he goes over the... Oh, no, 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 he, no, no. he Sorry, doesn't. Before that. He threatens to shoot him and then pulls the trigger, but it's empty. And he so he goes down the, right, the stairs because he wants him to be arrested and all yeah. that stuff. But then Lance Henry, which is, is a night, it's like, oh, you're going to arrest the guy, not kill him in the right. in 90s movie. Right. I'm Justice just like his arrest. <laughs> right. I'm like, but everyone else is dead. Good guys, bad guys. What's it matter? Everyone else is dead at this point. But so he's going to get arrested. But of course, he sees his opportunity. There's a cop's gun right there. He grabs that and. Oh, we get the Die Hard ending. I forgot about yeah, this. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. the Die Hard ending. He pulls a gun, and in between Joe and his captain, uh, his partner comes back and shoots Lance Henriksen over the railing. Yep. And yep. his body. Fun. It is the Die Hard shot because it's the 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 focus from yes. the the barrel of the gun to the yes. the partner who is the ineffective FBI guy who's now proved his worth, Who, who's now has an earring and has. Yep. Turned it up, yeah. as they say in the movie, or turned it on, either one. So, Which is always, and this is maybe a thing why you can't do this kind of movie now, is because all these films like seem to, like, they have the bad guy, right? You know, it's like, okay, he's under arrest. Mm. But the audience has a bloodlust for everything <laughs> the, that you've yes. seen gone. Right. It's like you have to somehow justify the character being dead by the end of the movie. Yes. And so they do these things, because I remember Ransom did it, and it felt really, like, you know, manipulative I mean, this one didn't feel as manipulative because, you know, and die hard, you know, it's like, yeah. it, it, it's like they have these guys, but they get their hand on a gun and then, okay, it's over and we can blast them into the next right. <laughs> century. It's like, I don't have a reason to kill you right now, unfortunately, but if you grab that cop's gun, I think it becomes a cliche and then that's oh, yeah. why you can't do it. So, you well, know. that's true. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, we get a tracking shot because uh, uh, Joe uh, wanders out of the Capitol all bloody and busted up and uh, just goes for a walk. And, and it's, yep. <laughs> Like credits, his captain comes in and says, "Give it to me," and he gives him his gun. Lance Hendrickson won. Yeah, yeah, he everything did. he yeah, everything he wanted to do except uh, no, everything he his wanted plan to do worked. It worked. Yeah, because now you're not going to have a governor who's hardline yep. on uh, biker. I mean, unless there's somebody else comes in, but not the whip. He took out the whole state government. The state basically. government, yeah. like even you know Nancy didn't make it. Yeah. Like everyone died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know you're here a lost at the end. Yeah. I guess I was kind of seeing that because Bosworth isn't really a vocal performer at the end. Right. And I'm like, he's just this kind of, you know, Terminator type. I mean, if you look at the new poster I or mean, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. On the, yeah. It looks like the Terminator. That's not the theatrical one, but, um, uh, you know, he's just like cold. Yeah. You know, and because it is a revenge movie at that point, right? It's like you fucking this guy yeah. pulled off all this shit mm -hmm. and it's just like he's got to go down. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and he does. And you mentioned also there was also a scene where uh, he seemed kind of, you know, you're talking like performance from a football player, oh, yeah. you know. Uh, turned actor where uh, Nancy was killed in front of him and he actually did kind of seem like he was uh, disturbed by yeah. all the shit that's going right on. like oh yeah he got because she gets killed and then he gets we know there's an uh, at least one more bullet in uh, Lance Henriksen's gun and he puts it to his head and I think pulls the trigger and it you know no go and he's breathing hard I think there was a tear running down like mm -hmm. I saw uh, moisture here either he's drooling or a tear ran down but like he showed emotion I think that's probably built into the more so uh, the storyline that got cut from this movie because it seems like he has more of a reaction than he should based on the movie prior. Mm -hmm. But based on what you've told us about their growing relationship in the original cut, that reaction makes more sense. Yeah, because right. she's like an innocent girl that yeah. he got into this and she died. You know, yeah. <laughs> so he's responsible. Well, yeah. either way, he's responsible right, for her yes. death. But I suppose the movie's trying to say like they had a love thing going on. It's like, did they? I don't know. You know, right. um, he felt real bad about it. Yeah, um, but I suppose that's interesting. So, um, yeah. all right. So I Stone guess, Cold. I guess yeah. I think that's the, it. The end of Stone Cold. Okay, Oof. but we're gonna go around the table and tell you whether or not we actually would recommend that you watch Stone Cold. And uh, I mean, you always have to pay attention for this part of the show because it's a wild card. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You don't know how it's gonna go. Yeah, the right. context clues don't always add up at the end <laughs> <Right>. of the night. <laughs> All right. But first, we're going to answer some of your mail because you wrote in about Stone Cold and some of the other movies that we watched. And so to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail! So many letters, our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I think Igor's going riding this weekend. Oh. He's uh -oh. got his jacket on. <laughs> what? Are, ooh. Igor, turn around. What are your colors? Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know green came in that shade. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Igor. <laughs> Well, we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, um, about tonight's movie. Stone Cold. Mm. Uh, B Movie Vault writes in and says, uh, Stone Cold, a.k.a. Hey, guys, let's blow up half the state. <laughs> he says, you're on a roll, freaks. First, the Apple, and now one of the greatest unsung action flicks of the 90s. There's so much to love, from evil Lance Henriksen to the vast array of mullets to a mm. climax that feels like every Joel Silver action movie compressed into 20 minutes of things going <laughs> boom. It does. Yes. It's ridiculous and ridiculously fun on the proverbial bun. <laughs> there truly is mullets of every variety. Oh, yes. every variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got yeah, mm -hmm. all sorts of hairstyles <laughs> from uh Karate Warrior 2 writes in oh. and says, I still need to go and crack out the VHS copy to watch this oh. and the review to come later. But okay. who would you grab from the sporting world to be an action star in twenty twenty two and why? Well, first of all, Dom, send us the picture of the VHS cover so we can see what the poster art looks like for where you're very at. True. I'm very curious about it. Uh, sports world rob gronkowski yeah oh my god that would be super i would watch yeah. rob gronkowski do something Absolutely. like this Absolutely. oh for sure <laughs> he seems like he's got the most personality yes. for something like this i would say marshawn lynch i would totally watch you with this okay. he, the, the guy the, if you guys aren't sports people he's famous for uh i'm just here so i don't get fined right that yes. gif, yeah. yeah he's famous for showing up to press conferences and not saying a goddamn word just so he doesn't get fined by his team and then leaving yep. <laughs> yeah yep. so well I don't yeah. follow enough to yeah. even know. I was yeah. going to say, give us one. The last one, though, was uh, like uh, when I was watching wrestling and Stone wrestler. Cold Steve Austin was, I was like, you know, maybe this guy. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of disappointed when he was in the Expendables and that was really yeah. it. Yeah. Did you ever see the but Condemned? I didn't. Was oh, that, they like, say that's was that? that's like they say that's the best one of like I know it's a WWE movie, but they say it's actually a pretty good movie. Yeah, it's like I'm, a battle royal esque I'm, thing. But I'm surprised that John Cena's got like I mean like he John Cena he he did like made, twelve rounds yeah. two and yeah. shit. And yeah, he Randy made the Orton, jump like, right because oh, yeah. wasn't the fireman or whatever. What was that he's movie? He's like where a he, family friendly guy now. He's yeah, because like, yeah. yeah. they're all trying to follow the same of the rock of the rock. Yeah. The rock is the golden path yeah. of how he did it. So they all try and do that, and then mm -hmm. WWE started making their own movies and putting guys who look like Brian. Bosworth in mm -hmm. movies like I never watched any of them because I figured mm -hmm. they'd be bad mm -hmm. but who knows maybe they're more like this I doubt it but it still continues on to this day okay oh Joe Burrow I would love to see Joe Burrow Joe Burrow that'd be good uh, Joe Burrow if and no one's familiar is the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals and he's known for dressing very flamboyantly on uh, away game trips uh, uh like just because he can and so his style would kind of uh, fit in with this movie so I would love to see Joe Burrow and yeah <laughs> Need to bring back the yeah. macho action. Brian movie. Erlacher <laughs> returns. Yeah. yeah. Um, Simon Carter says, I saw this movie once when I was a kid and thought it was awesome. <laughs> but now I'm not so sure how it would hold up today. I seem to recall a bar called Tit for Tat that I thought was the best <laughs> name ever. And I think this has a bunch of different versions after the original was deemed to be way too violent. And then it may be a loose remake of a movie made on Australia. Oh, well, oh. that would be new. To us, but we do know that there was an NC-17 version of the movie yeah. originally. I want to see that. I want to see that version. <laughs> what else could they add? <laughs> uh, DJ Dogmanfish writes mm. in and says, it's a movie where the villains kind of win yep. and no snack food will be safe from blenders or bullets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, there, there is true. a lot of snack massacre in that yes. grocery store. <laughs> a lot, yeah. Like you're talking about like, yeah. like yeah, what cans go. You gotta, yeah, you got to find things to put squibs in that when it blows up, you get yeah. debris that goes everywhere. Chips, chips is and perfect. crackers. Yeah. Chips is always great. Yep. Popcorn would be Somebody funny. Somebody went through a cooler at one point too, like the glass yeah. and the cooler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chris Keenan says, are you guys going for the putting weird shit in a blender series? <laughs> when you were talking about Arnold's breakfast and end of days, I honestly thought of the lizard food scene and was hoping the boss wasn't going to drink that. And it makes good. 
It, I'm not sure it makes good lizard food either. No. No, and it doesn't seem good for the lizard. It's probably warm. I don't know why I feel that way, but... I know, because well, I'm assuming the orange juice came out of the oh, refrigerator. Oh, that's true. So yeah. I thought it was yeah. cold. I'm like, you going to Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Don't we'll the, we'll don't never find the Snickers, out. Like, uh, they're cold-blooded yeah. animals. Yeah. I'll never find out. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, what's going on in the universe that this movie keeps popping up on my podcast? Unfortunately, action movies from this era are a bit of a blind spot for me. At this time, I was probably watching cartoons. Mm -hmm. So anything I know about it, I've learned from other podcasts. Apparently, it's the next next level nuts, and only with only the mere suggestion of a script. Uh -huh. Oh, speaking of which, apparently Lance Henriksen wrote most of his lines for this movie. That like, tricks. He gave yeah. himself good lines. Yeah, basically, yeah. he's got a good outlet. Well, it wasn't the outro, but like uh, when he kills the whip. Yeah, he's like, this reminds me of the last thing my daddy told me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was it like? Last son. thing, last thing my daddy told me before he died, son, that gun's loaded, right? Son, that gun's loaded, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah. really which is funny. A, it's a good line. <laughs> uh, Mark yeah. Zidane says, "Holy shit, yes, I've been waiting a long time for this one to come along. This was on regular rotation among VHS tapes, recorded movies I used to watch with my cousins. To this day, Lance Henriksen giving it his all as always, and the lizard milkshake still makes me gay." <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's bad. Uh, Novato Judoka also remembers recordable VHS tapes. Uh, he says, I nabbed one from my uncle as a kid, so in my mind I expect Above the Law and Pretty Woman to be played before this. <laughs> uh, I wish I cared about football so I could get the 100% cheese factor of this movie. Yeah. Don't you love that where you had the stuff you just recorded on tapes yes. earlier in the day and just like, okay, I have Ghostbusters 2, um, and... Uh, Die Hard should be before this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then maybe Roadhouse at the end of it too. Mm. Just yeah. like ah, I expect the commercials and the. Yep. If you record anything off Showtime, the coming up next. I know. Other yeah. people's money. Mm -hmm. That is Shit always like the that. thing. I suppose that's why you like those TV cuts. Oh yeah, that's oh, no, that's exactly <laughs> like it. That's a, exactly yeah. why that's I love a TV I used cut. To see the movie. That's yeah. how I watched everything. Yeah. Uh, Joey Blythe says, uh, okay, so uh, last week we watched a movie called The Apple. Um, sure did. And we did. And that is, uh, uh, Michaela has announced that this is the uh, return of the summer of canon yes. movies. So this movies. is part, this is the sequel. This Third is the sequel? legacy sequel. Oh, the legacy sequel. Because it's many okay. years later after legacy the sequel. last okay. one. We, we thought the franchise was done because it didn't end well. Right. So, but we're but reviving it. that doesn't mean it. we yeah. can't bring it back yeah, for Because exactly. right. we've done reasons. a lot of a lot of canon movies on this show. And Joey Blythe, he knows this because he's saying on the almost anniversary, and I think he's talking of the Apple, even though yeah. okay. uh, he says, did you know Chuck Norris doesn't actually do a push-up. It's just the earth punching him in the face. <laughs> the earth punching him in the face. Okay. <laughs> I like that one. Okay, okay I kind of like that one. Are there uh, Chuck Norris movies on your lineup? Don't tell us. The surprises. I, I, we've, I think we might have covered most of them. Already. All the ones we should cover. Missing anyway, in anyone? action a would be the big one, right? Yeah. That's not canon, I don't think. Is it? Oh. I don't think so. I no, think that's I Columbia so. Pictures. Yeah. 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 Uh, Pete Hyams, 81. Oh, hello. You sound new. Mm-hmm. Ironically, Pete, Peter Hyams is the director. Of I was going to say, I'm like, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, I was like, wait, Peter Peter is this a Larry Block situation? Oh, oh no. no. Fuck but Larry Block. About the Apple, uh -huh. Pete Hyams 81 says, after seeing the Canon Films documentary, the Apple grew or my movie list grew significantly yeah uh, yeah right it, if you want ideas for stuff to watch yeah watch that's actually that not a bad idea yeah. i might have to go watch yeah. that uh the previous week we watched end of days the arnold schwarzenegger mm. movie and travis legler writes in and says i kept thinking that i was that i was keep uh, or, okay so we were saying uh rod steiger yeah is in the movie as the priest yes. he helps out and so travis legler says he kept thinking that that was James Tolkien, and he just wanted oh, to, yeah. the, him to keep calling Arnold a sl slacker. A slacker. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Back to the future. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, everybody, for yes, thank you very much. Uh, Thanks right. for writing in. We, <laughs> we appreciate, appreciate it. it. It was a very full mailbag. Um, so now we're going to go around. The oh, room. and anything we didn't get to, like, we <laughs> sorry, we're. This movie yeah. was dense. Yeah, it was yeah. dense. Yeah. We had a lot to yeah. go through. But maybe we can get to you next week. Yeah. Uh, so. Now we're going to go around the room and we're going to tell you what we thought of the movie and whether you should watch it, starting with me. <laughs> um, wow. What an undiscovered classic. I'm just going to say it off the bat. I recommend this movie. Um, it's got all the explosions you want. It's got all the action you want. Uh, it's got some of the best action stuff from the 80s or 90s. Uh, again, we talked about uh, the impactfulness of the action in this movie. Lance Henriksen is giving it everything and he creeps the hell out of me. He's doing great. Um, 
I mean, Brian Bosworth is doing good enough. Like uh, he's he's all right. I'm I'm you know, however you feel about him, I don't know enough about him to get quite get a grab on him, but. Uh, they did good enough. Um, uh, the so story surprised me again. Everyone dies and Lance Henriksen wins. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting that. Um, it really does ramp up at that end, and that's fantastic. This is a great action movie, and it's got I mean, it's got Lance Henriksen, William Forsythe, a uh, bunch of characters that uh, character actors you've seen before and that you like. Um, the partner storyline is a little shaky, but it's funny at times. Mm-hmm. Um, it pays off in the end. Uh, yeah. If you haven't seen this or heard of it, I definitely recommend you should go see it. I hadn't heard of it. Um, and I was, uh, very pleased. So I recommend stone cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a stone cold too? No. Damn. Damn. All right. <laughs> it couldn't live up to this anyway. <laughs> no, I don't know why. I don't no, know how it would top it. It, it, it cost 25, right? Oh. First weekend it made two. Oh. I think it ended with nine. Uh, oh, okay. That's it. It was a it was a colossal failure, Damn, that's, <laughs> which is why you don't know about right, it. Right, I guess so. Well, people now you know about it, so you should go watch it, Michaela. Yeah, I I knew nothing about this movie. I didn't know what to expect. I'd never even heard of it. I avoided all information about it. <laughs> yes, and uh, I love how like grimy and mean spirited and just like low down dirty this movie is, and how adult and mature it is. Like. Mm. Yeah, it's violent as fuck and just slimy and gross and just like off putting in every way, you know? Uh, But that's what I love about it. And I love its commitment to like, if we're going to do something, we're going to do it the perfect 100% stuntman way. Like, love that. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, it's true hidden gem that I can't believe I've never heard of or never seen. Like, it's, I just really, I don't know what else to say. We talked about all the crazy stuff that happened, but I feel like we missed stuff because so much crazy stuff happens. Yes. Just when I thought it couldn't stop escalating, it just kept going and going. Yeah, what, yeah. Was that, what was the crash that we were just like, uh, this is the greatest thing in the world? Was that yeah. the motorcycle into the helicopter? Yeah. yeah I think that, I was just yeah. like, what? yes! Yeah. <laughs> the amount of times I said, whoa, holy shit, watching right. this movie. Yeah, it hasn't like, whoa, happened. Oh, that was cool. Yeah. yeah. A lot of good stuff like that. Yeah, it legitimately caught me off guard and surprised me with a lot of its stuff. And yeah, the performances I think are pretty great. And it's just a nice little time capsule movie too it's i love how seriously it takes itself i think that's why it works so yeah i mean yeah definitely go see it like i can't think of another movie like this so you gotta watch it you know definitely recommend colin yeah because that's the thing like i mean i know that like biker movies were like a thing in like the 60s Mm -hmm. and early 70s there were lots of them right Mm -hmm. um and uh yeah joe namath he was in like uh, oh that's right (laughs) yeah (laughs) but um Another football player, right? Uh, this is like, it's weird, I guess, from me watching this movie over two different points in my life, right? Ah. Where When it was new and I was younger, it seemed like the script was, um, like, it didn't, like, the more efficient action movies of the time kind of kept you rolling the whole way through it and, you know... Um, and maybe this one kind of seemed like it was getting bogged down in plot or something like this. This is like 20 something me. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, but now when I watch it, I like, I respect the script more because I'm like, Oh, it actually kind of, okay. I get what, you know, the bigger picture is. Right. And I appreciate it in a better way, I suppose now. So it's like, Oh, I, I actually like this movie <laughs> more now <laughs> than I did when I saw it. And I think, um, yeah, as we said, as I said before, the idea that, you know, there's these uh, movies that were second tier in the 90s when they came out, mm. um, they do that. You you appreciate them more for what they were doing. I mean, like stunt teams and all that stuff and the, the kind of it's a hardcore action movie that's kind of it, it's not, you know, compromising on. It's going to show you like the ugly side of the, and it, it, I guess that's the other thing that I kind of, this is my biker movie. I know people have <laughs> Sons of Anarchy or whatever. Uh, Sons of the, Anarchy doesn't come this close to being this like uh, hardcore. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, it was a TV show. It, it's got limitations, you know? It was, on was FX. FX, but it, yeah. You know. but yeah, they did some stuff on there, they did but nothing some like. Stuff. Not at really? the frequency that this movie does, though. Oh, okay. So this is the biker movies then. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> there you this go. is Pardon my them, yeah. my biker movie. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, good choice. It's so good choice. yeah, I like that behind the scenes kind of you know you're in with the uh, you know uh, how, I don't know how realistic this is, you know, but <laughs> none of us it, really it's a, know. It's a now. fascinating like you know look behind the curtain of a subculture that, that kind of exists out there, um, uh, and I think the action is above par 
for uh, even its era. You know, I mean, oh, yeah. it's unfortunate that it got under or overlooked because there's a lot of stuff that they're doing that's like, oh, that's actually like a pretty good. But I think maybe you have to. I don't know if we're spoiled. We've watched mo- a lot of movies and we look at like, you know, stunt work and stuff mm-hmm. like that, where, you know, if somebody goes into it and they're like, I, I don't, I don't get it. They're the, the odd kids. So they're doing this stuff, but like, I appreciate seeing these things really done. It yeah. adds like something to it. I mean, I remember it, it draws to a comparison, like the end of remember invasion USA, where they mm-hmm. had like, there there's helicopters. They destroyed them yeah. all. Yeah. Going down. Oh, and when they were like that attack and mm-hmm. they had all the, the soldiers out yes. there and all that stuff. And it was like, wow, you actually did this. And there's tanks rolling down the street and that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. It kind of feels like that only during the day. Right. In broad <laughs> daylight. Yes. Um, and I think that's the other thing that makes this movie uh, leave you with a, a on a high point because it does ramp up, you know, and it does save like the best for last. It's last 20 minutes or whatever is this big attack on the, well, I guess Arkansas State. <laughs> yeah. Capital, right. Uh, and it just kind of keeps like expanding. The stakes go up and you're like, oh, my God. And uh, yeah, I was just uh, really thrilled by it. So I would. You know, recommend. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta see if you if you're an action fan and you haven't seen it, uh, you gotta go back and look at Stone Cold. Yeah, you have, uh, to. You absolutely. Have to. All right. Well, I guess that makes that freak show approved. Mm-hmm. Yes, I I'll say for Holly as well because I have feeling. She I would have approve a this. feeling she would. Well, recommend. because <laughs> last it, we, and we have audio proof of this. Last week she said she was considering bringing this uh, movie. Right. It's been yep. on her list for a while, so yep. <laughs> yeah, she would have liked it. Yep. There you go. All right, so she rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> thank you for kidding. sticking with us. And uh, <laughs> Jesus, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. I, so I go dark. So I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by John. What are we watching next week? Uh, next week, we're going to get a little gross. We're going to watch The Nest. What? I'm the cockroach. Dark. Cockroach oh, movie. Oh, why, why do you always <laughs> do this to us, Sean? <laughs> Bug, bug was decent enough for you. That was ugh, okay. All right. I've seen some. Uh, I oh, I haven't seen the movie. Okay. So, oh, oh, okay. so a cat's so is definitely going to die in this movie. Pro- oh, be by, eaten by a giant yes. roach, definitely <laughs> yeah. guarantee yes. it. But I don't think I've. I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen. It. I know the the poster is yeah. the woman like uh, mating with yeah. <laughs> the giant what? cockroach. Oh my or god! Something. Okay. Yeah. Well, now I gotta look this up. <laughs> okay. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be gross. Things are yeah. coming back to me. All right. All right. Uh, so next week is the nest, 1988, on the Saturday night. I think that's right. I think it's 83. 80. Okay, on the Saturday Night <laughs> Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. Well, there's a 2020 movie called The Nest that's fucking things up. God damn it, you were right. <laughs>